let's set this somewhere over here. So I, I want to make sure that I can organize this in a, in, a, in a manner that makes sense. So let's double click, add a bottle, pick this, and move object to this layer. Now, in shaded mode, nothing changes. If I go to rendered mode, look, look what happens. Or actually, sorry, shaded mode. Rendered mode, nothing happens. In shaded mode, the bottle turned blue. Well, that's great. Why did it do that? Well, it did that because the color chip for that layer is blue. If I don't like blue, I can make it gray by changing it to black or any color I want. In this case, I think we'll go with a red water bottle. So let's go ahead and make that red and say OK. So there's our water bottle in red. Now, <clears throat> I want to focus on the cap. So for now, I'm going to just hide that. And we'll go back to our front view. Although, actually, we probably need to bring it back so that our cap makes sense. So let's make our cap. And again, we're going to do it just like we did before. But in this case, I'm going to, since my origin isn't down there, I'm going to just overdraw the origin. And we'll just trim that, which is fine. So I'm going to just bring this over here. It's going to have a little bit of a lip on it. It's going to come up. It's going to come over. Have the little spout. Something like that. Okay. So it's overdrawn. How do we fix it? Well, watch this. If I pick these two points, we already did this trick, right? Double click and hit zero. So those are now lined up. Now, if I double click this, or actually, if I snap this, I don't know, my gumball set to snappy dragging. All right, so we're just going to move those to zero. I can also just trim these. So let's do that. So I'm going to start a trim line at zero. I'm going to just bring this up, and I'm going to trim by either using the trim tool here, or I can just type trim. I want to cut this one, and I want to cut that one. So now I know I've trimmed this exactly at zero. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. And now that I know how this is spaced out, I don't need the bottle, so I'm going to hide it. Let's go ahead and revolve it, just like we did the bottle. Let's do it from a perspective point of view. So where did we find revolve? It was back under here, right? So we're going to revolve this curve. Where's our axis? Well, I'm going to hold down the Option key, and I'm going to snap to the end of this. And then, since I can't really determine which way is up or down in perspective view, I'm going to just hold down the Alt, the Alt Option key, sorry, and click the end point here. So I know my axle is correct, and you'll see that this is revolving correctly, and we want a full circle. So there it is. Now, it would have made sense to do this with history so that I had some the options to change it. So let's do that. We're going to click history. We're going to repeat the revolve. This is our curve. This is our axle. And we want a full circle. Go back to the front view. Yeah, let's mess with this just a little bit. Anything worth doing is worth messing with a little bit, right? So let's add just a little bit of style to this thing. Maybe this wants to be a little taller. See I'm modifying the original cur input curve and this is changing. Maybe this lip wants to be, I don't know, maybe this whole lip wants to be a little less whatever it is. Let's bring our bottle back and make sure that we're not doing anything crazy. See how we're getting a little close here on the clearance? So maybe it doesn't make sense to do that. So let's move this back out. Maybe it needs to be more. Maybe it needs to be out here. Okay. Super easy to change, super easy to iterate. Maybe this is a little high. So let's bring that down. Something like that. Okay. Hide the bottle again because we're good. And I'd like to keep my screen very uncluttered. So now we've got our part, right? Well, we could shell it at this point like we did before. And that would be great, except for the fact that I wouldn't necessarily know how to shell it perfectly to get it to snap to our bottle. So how do we do that? 
well, before I start messing with this thing, let's bring our bottle back and let's do a Boolean subtract. Boolean difference, sorry, use the right terminology. So I'm going to subtract from this. I don't want to delete my input using this and watch what happens. Now if I hide my bottle. I want to work on the default layer. Now if I hide my bottle, look what happens. Cool, right? So now I know I've got a channel going through here. So let's make let's make our hole through this thing. And in this case, I'm going to just draw basically what our hole is going to look like. So I'm going to come in here about this, I'm going to come in here, and then I want to make the channel for this thing where the water is going to go through. All right. Now, let's revolve this. I'm going to use zero as the start of my revolve and just hold down shift, and I want a full circle. Now look what happens. Okay. Did you notice what I did? I'm, I purposely made a mistake because I wanted you to see what was going on here. If I hide this part for now, look what happened. See, I didn't cap the top or the bottom. If I were to try and use this as a Boolean difference, I'd have to deal with what's called normals. Normals are located here, analyze direction. Normals are little arrows that point in or out. Okay, if a surface is open, you have to tell Rhino what is the outside and what is the inside because it doesn't necessarily know. In this case, it's going to make a, an educated guess, and in this case, it guessed correctly. If the normals were flipped inside out and I were to try and do a difference on this, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work right. Like if you're clicking it, let's, let's just do that and look and see what happens. Show. So let's see what happens if I do a Boolean difference here. So if I pick this and I pick this, look what happens. It didn't do what I wanted it to do. What happens if I make sure that my normals are going in the right direction? Now, now it does what I wanted it to do. Now, there's a very easy way to avoid that problem which is to just make sure the stuff that you used to Boolean with is closed. And in this case, I'm going to run the cap command, and it's going to find planar openings and close it up. Now, closed poly surfaces, the normals always point out. Rhino knows what's the inside and what's the outside. If the normals point in on a closed surface, you know that there's a problem with your closed surface. So that gives you a good indication of what to go fix. So in this case, let's go ahead and since we're set up correctly, we're going to just Boolean difference this from that. Now, I kept this piece just for illustrative purposes. And in this case, I don't need it anymore. I'm going to delete it. But most of the time in my model practice, I would just make a new layer. So let's just do that. And I just like to call these cutters. So I'm going to move this object here, and I'm going to hide it. So now we've got a cap that we know fits our bottle, right? because we used our bottle to make the cut. We know it fits perfectly. We've got a hole through it, and we know our cap does what it needs it to do. So let's go ahead and tune this up a little bit. I'm going to hide the bottle. And let's just add some fillets here. We can do this in perspective view. Do, 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 do. Variable radius fillet. Let's put one here, and here, and here, and here, and here. OK? Now, since it's all set at 0.75, we know that's going to be too big. And we can see from the preview immediately that we've got an issue. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll start typing in values, 0.02. And make sure you grab the right handle, 0.02. So that looks good. This one can be a little bigger. 
Maybe we make this one 0.15. Nice generous radius there. And I'm okay with 0.75 there. That one looks a little big. Maybe we go 0.04 here. So you can design this on the fly, right? You're making decisions. You're making design decisions. You're not just a CAD monkey, right? You don't want a CAD monkey. You want to be an artist. You want to use this stuff to make art. So you can design this on the fly and make decisions to make your product better than it was when you had the first vision when you sketched it. All right. So let's make a new layer for this. We're going to call it cap. And we'll make this black. Now let's make it dark gray. And then we're going to change move object to this layer. So let's look and see what we did. What did we do? Made a bottle. All right, that looks cool. But I'm going to say instead of being a flip top, this is a screw top. And we're not going to design the threads because this is just for presentation purposes. But we are going to put some little knurls on here because this is a cool trick. So black is tough to work with. So I'm going to actually make this gray. And in this case, if I make this all the way black, it turns gray. If I make it a little bit black, it turns black to light gray. So I'm going to pull it all the way down here so it's gray so I can see what's going on. I'm going to hide my bottle. And let's add some knurling to this. I'm going to use a command called cell CRV, cell curve. And that's going to pick all the curves, which I can very conveniently move to this layer. 